What's going on, everyone? So, the Lakers might be more desperate for a trade now than they were previously, right? With the Jared Vanderbilt news, just to bring people up to speed real quick, um, Jared Vanderbilt is not expected to be ready for training camp. He's still rehabbing his foot. Um, he's not supposed to be ready for preseason. Uh, and regular season, or at least the start of regular season, is kind of up in the air. It's not good. Because you don't have anybody that can supplement what Jared Vanderbilt does for this team. I mean, our best five-man unit was still with Jared Vanderbilt. Now, look, you can go with the Rui Hachimura in, in the starting five. And now offensively, you're good, but you don't have that balance. And it's what I talked about all season when they had that starting five. Even when the Lakers were like 9-0 and with them. I kept preaching like, yeah, this is great. But what happens when the offense isn't cooking, right? And lo and behold... You saw that against Denver. When the offense was cooking, Lakers are cooking, right? When the offense is cooking, Lakers are beating Denver by 20. But as soon as that offense hits a wall, that's it, right? We can't stop anybody. You know, you go with the Max Christie. He gives you, you know, 40% catch and shoot threes. Plus, he can defend. He arguably is our second best on-ball defender. But he's undersized, really, for a two-guard, right? Like, some matchups, some nights, I do think he can handle it, but... You know, going up against Phoenix and he's got to guard Kevin Durant, he's getting torched. He just doesn't have the size and the length, right? He's more of a two than he is a three, right? Now you go with Dalton Connect, but that's so much pressure to put on a young rookie who couldn't even really defend guys in summer league, right? Now, if you want offense, yeah, he makes a lot of sense, but you might as well just stick with Rui Hachimura because at least you know and, ex and can expect a positive return, right? Now you could go with Cam Reddish, which I think there is a real argument for, and I might even like lean that way personally, at least try it within reason. You know, if you're playing him 35 minutes a game at the three, then no. But like to start the game and to like maybe close the game, sure. Right? Like, and then at any point you can always just take him out. Problem was Darvin Ham just didn't understand like situational awareness, right? Like, okay, like Cam Reddish's defense isn't helping us right now. Get him out the game. We need offense, right? He just would keep sticking with Cam Reddish or play him with Tory and Prince or whatever. So it was just a mess. So, you know, you kind of go down the list and it's like, do you go small and put Gabe Vincent at the point, D'Lo at the two and Reeves at the three? Again, you're probably getting torched. Like, do you go big and go with like Jackson Hayes at the five? I don't really like him as a starting five, like him and Anthony Davis, sure, but like to start and close games, I don't really think that that's the best idea, right? But like now you have LeBron out on the perimeter and it's like now you have the same issue where it's like, you know, you don't have perimeter defense, you, you're probably lacking rebounding, like it's just, I, I, I like what is the answer here? I think the only answer might be you got to go get a Jeremy Grant, right? And here's the other side of that. If you're the Lakers, because originally the reports for Jeremy Grant, they wanted Rui Hachimura and Jared Vanderbilt, right? If you're the Lakers, do you consider that now? Right? If you're the Lakers, especially if you only have to give up one first, or maybe no first, at that point, I'd probably not even give up any first. I'd probably be like, look, I'll give, we'll give you Jared Vanderbilt and like a pick swap, right? Like, because there is risk with Jared Vanderbilt. Right? There is like, you know, like what happens if he never, we've seen lots of players get foot injuries and are never the same, ever, right? So it's like, you know, like do, there is a risk, which I understand, but I'm not giving up an unprotected, or a, yeah, an unprotected first Jared Vanderbilt and Rui Hachimura. I'd rather take my chances with Jared Vanderbilt. But if you can basically take Rui, Jared Vanderbilt, and, you know, Cam Reddish, along with a you know, pick swap and go get Jeremy Grant, right? And you keep Gabe Vincent, which I know a lot of people aren't super high on Gabe Vincent. I know a lot of people are like, think he's trash and need to get rid of him. Well, one, you'd still have his salary that you could use to go trade, right? So you'd still have him and D'Angelo Russell. That gets you to another 30 million if you add one of these vet minimum guys. So you could still make other moves. You could still trade him if you need to. But if he's healthy, which based on reports he is, then he gives you that point of attack position at the guard, he was terrible offensively last year, but he was very good defensively when, when he actually played, right? So he gives you that defense, and hopefully he can kind of pick up his three-point shooting or just his scoring period, right? And you don't need to now solve that position, right? Because if you trade Gabe Vincent, right, well, now you need a backup point guard. Yes, you could 
you know, slot LeBron or slot Reeves or whatever, but like it'd be nice to have that point of attack defensive guard that can help, you know, out on the perimeter. Now they do have Jordan Goodwin who could potentially slot into that role. Maybe you could bring him in and have him slot into that role. So maybe it's not a big issue. But I think you at least now explore the possibility of getting Jared Vanderbilt. Right? Again, you don't just trade him just to trade him, but I do think it's it's something you at least consider. But regardless, even if you plan on keeping Jared Vanderbilt, you got to get insurance at this point. And this is the problem, though, right? This is the issue. Teams, because this report came out, teams now know you don't have anybody to replace him, buddy. Right? So now it just... I talked heavily about prices dropping, and that could still happen, right? Team like Portland, they might look at it as like, you know... Like we could take a flyer on Jared Vanderbilt. He's making ten million a year. We'd rather have ten million a year than forty million by the time his contract ends, right? Like, so they might look at it and go, like, okay, fine, we'll still take the flyer. Or a team like Portland in general might just go, like, hey, we really, we just really don't want to to go in with Jeremy Grant to start the season, right? He's gonna take minutes away from our young guys that we're trying to grow and develop here, right? Like, we'd rather just trade him. So it's not. I'm not saying it's not going to happen that the price is going to drop, but gives these other teams a little more ammo. It's like, what are you, what happens if Jerry Vanderbilt can't stay healthy? Or at the trade deadline, right? If the Lakers are looking to make a move at the trade deadline. Well, now teams are going to be a lot more put. Like, hey, Jerry Vanderbilt can't stay healthy this year. You need a wing. You going to trust Rui again? And then you run into Denver and they blow you out again? Like, it's just... It, 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 it just adds more fuel to other teams' fire and trying to fleece the Lakers. And, you know, I mean, if you're Rob Palinka, you got to do your due diligence, right? If you're Rob Palinka, you got to explore trades for Jared Vanderbilt and you got to try to get somebody. But uh, again, obviously, if nothing's there, you don't do it, right? Like this, I don't mean this in a sense of like, we're so desperate, like you have to go, now you got to give up two firsts for Jeremy Grant. No, you don't. still don't do anything silly, Still don't do anything foolish, but <laughs> there is now this kind of sense of urgency of like, hey, we we really need to to get something to kind of supplement Jared Vanderbilt, right? Like, and then look, if you want to keep Jared Vanderbilt, that's fine, right? I've been big on not trading Jared Vanderbilt, right? Trade Reeves, trade everybody, right? Don't trade Jared Vanderbilt because he, he's just. Even just as a skilled player, right? A skill, you know, a, a, a skilled position of need, right? 15, 20 minutes a game, right? Where it's just like, hey, see that guy? Don't let him score for the next 10 minutes. Shut him down, right? And you play him, whatever, four minutes a quarter or whatever. And just in those four minutes, Jared Vanderbilt's just putting all his energy and effort and just stopping, you know, a, a Luca or whatever, like... I, yeah, like there's there's that argument there. Like I just the Lakers just don't have anybody to supplement that. Now, if you get somebody, right? Like I don't hate like if you were to go do the Jeremy Grant trade and keep Jared Vanderbilt, I don't hate now going and using him to go get a center, right? Get a can you get a Wendell Carter Jr. or a, a Walker Kessler by giving up Jared Vanderbilt? Right? I mean Utah never really even wanted to trade Jared Vanderbilt, right? So do they like are they willing to take him back or you know do you swap him for Valanciunas or something like that? Because now you have a Jeremy Grant, right? So now you solve that position of need as the backup center. Now you got your 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 small forward for now in the future to to line up with LeBron and stuff. It's just it's it's just a such a bad spot for the Lakers to be in. Right, because it's just again, it it just adds insult to injury, right? It's just like, man, and and now there's even more of this desperation. Now, you know, now we got to figure out even more how to like make this all work and whether, and then even when Jared Vanderbilt does come back, is he a hundred? Does he like ever get a hundred percent? And even if he does, like, how long does it take? Right, Jared Vanderbilt got hurt, came back. It took him like ten games to just start looking. Like Jared Vanderbilt. He wasn't even fully Jared Vanderbilt yet. He wasn't even the 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 guy that we used to know. He was still, he was just starting to get into that stride. He was probably another five plus games from really getting back to being Jared Vanderbilt. So you're talking 15, 20 games for him to really get back into the swing of Jared Vanderbilt. That's just that's not good, right? Like, so if he misses the first 
15, 20 games, and then it takes him another 15, 20 games to get right. I mean, we don't really get Jared Vanderbilt back, like the actual Jared Vanderbilt back, until like the midway point of the season, right? What if we're already in trouble, right? Like, so I don't know. I think that there's an argument that like, you're probably not getting anything for him right now, but like when he gets back, if he starts to look good, I think there's an argument of like, uh, like let's see if a team will like let's trade him. Obviously, it would suck if he does if he is able to stay healthy and he is able to be good. It's like ah, uh, but like, you know, depending on what you get back, right? Like, I think you're probably in good shape, and it's just like uh, you know, do you just kind of let it be someone else's problem? It's the point. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like, yeah, this is this is not good, <laughs> right? Uh, do you think that the Lakers have even more urgency to get a trade done? Or do you think, like, nah, this doesn't really change anything? If something's there, do it. If it's not, don't do it. Um, again, no trade is better than a bad trade. I want to trade as much as the next guy, right? But you also don't want to be, and it's also not good to negotiate and desperation right like so i don't know but let me know down in the comments below that being said if you haven't liked this video hit that like button helps me a lot so me enjoy these types of videos and i truly appreciate it not subscribe channel hit that subscribe button turn on the bell notifications appreciate y'all see you in the next one thank you